This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. It is an astonishing truth of human historical record through the centuries that it does not require very many people to accomplish really big things upon this earth. A small but determined minority of men and women can do almost anything if they choose. It has been said that 5% of the human race really think, 10% of the people think that they think, and the rest of humanity would rather die than think. End of quote. But it is that 5% of men and women who really change things and accomplish large measures upon this earth. Historians say that less than 100 men and women produced both the famous Renaissance and the Reformation in European history. A band of only 10 men produced the Federal Union in the United States of America and composed its constitution. A small but determined minority of people can do almost anything. But what are you doing with your life? Have you found some great purpose, some mighty cause, which evokes from you the best that you have to give in your idealism, your purpose, your energy, and your commitment? You may say, but I'm only one person. Do you know that two of the most famous early presidents of the United States of America, Thomas Jefferson and John Quincy Adams, were each elected to that office of the presidency by only one single vote of the Electoral College. And yet another later president, Rutherford Hayes, was also elected by one single electoral vote. When his election was then contested, and the matter was referred to the Electoral Commission, again, Rutherford Hayes was the winner of the presidency by only one single vote. Realize the truth that one single individual person, one man or woman, can make tremendous differences in the world and the way it is. The importance of one single individual can never be underestimated, nor can the importance of you as an individual, but more than that, as an individual son or daughter of God, here for a purpose, on this planet, not as a blind and unforeseen accident, but for a reason... The God who conceived you in the infinite mind of God, the eternal plan which involved bringing into existence free will creatures of whom you are one with a divine destiny and an eternal itinerary lying before you if you will choose to enter that great voyage of faith. All of this is available to you and even more thrilling, it is available within you this very moment, if you will seek it. Seek, said Jesus of Nazareth, and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask, and you will receive. And he said, the kingdom of God is within you. You, your physical body, you are the temple of God, for God's indwelling presence can stimulate and inspire your mind, your thinking, your plans and purposes, your very thought processes, how you think how you feel day to day, how you respond to the challenges, the difficulties, the frustrations, the fears, the anxieties of life, and you can become master of all these things because God, the God of this universe, is greater. God is larger. God is bigger than any problem, any vicissitude, any fear, any frustration, any anxiety, any uncertainty which you encounter in your life. And God's will for you is good. It is the greatest possible good conceivable for your life, for it is conceived within the mind of the God who loves you with a love which will not let you go, a love which is forgiving and merciful, a love which is transforming and renewing and can fill your life to brimming with power until you're able to say with certitude and with vigor with the psalmist, my cup runneth over. The good things of my life are spilling over at the brim because they are God's good things. Gifts of God, gifts of God's love, his renewing spiritual power and his energy aflow within your life. Dr. Lawrence M. Gould, president of Carleton College, once wrote, Our values, our ideals as a civilization are upside down. We pay lip service to spiritual values, but we give top priority to mink coats and big cars. We have created a generation whose aim is security in an age where almost everything but security exists. 
there is an ultimate spiritual security available to your experience and to your life, which is the security of committing all you are, all you have, all you hope to be or become to God and praying with earnestness, it is my will that your will be done. That God's plans and purposes prevail in your life, not merely your own machinations and manipulations or what you may think looks good or would appear proper or in your own best interest, but what God knows is in your own best interest and the best universe of God's great plan for this planet and for this universe, including you. That is the will of God. And aligning and synchronizing your mind, your plans, your thinking, your desires with the mind, plans, thinking, and desires of God is the greatest enterprise in all of human life. Dr. Carl Jung, the world-famous psychiatrist, described mental illness in these words. He said of mental illness, it arises from having no love but only sex, no faith because one is afraid to grope in the dark, no hope because one is disillusioned by the world and by life itself, and no understanding because one has failed to read the meaning of his or her own existence. And the psychiatrist, Dr. Alfred Adler, has written, I suppose all the ills of human personality can be traced back to one simple thing, namely not understanding the meaning of the statement, it is more blessed to give than to receive. End of quote. The real solutions to the real problems of this world and the real problems of your life are not material solutions nor merely psychological solutions. They are spiritual because until you begin to satisfy, to satiate that spiritual questing, hunger, and yearning, and thirsting within you, there can be no permanent peace, no authentic happiness, no real joy in the living of life, because until you find God and have been found by God and know it, your life, as H.G. Wells, the historian, has put it, begins at no beginning and works to no meaningful end. Because God is the source of everything, and God can be the source of everything within your life. The things you really need, not just material things, but more. Peace of mind, peace of heart, the consolations of spiritual growth, of knowing God as your very best friend in all this universe of universes. A sense of cosmic connection, completeness, fulfillment, at long last that for which you have sought so earnestly and perhaps so fitfully and frustratingly through the years of your life, you will have found, and found with a capital F, capital F-O-U-N-D, you will have found what you've really been looking for when you find God, because God is the great source of all, and when you find God, you have found everything really important to the living of your life and to the genuine satisfaction of your soul and human happiness. I remember a few years ago I met and spent the afternoon with the Olympic gold medal winner Bob Richards, who was the world's champion pole vaulter. But when Bob Richards was given the award as the U.S. Amateur Athlete of the Year, he was asked by reporters for the secret of his athletic powers, and he gave an interesting answer. He said, I owe my achievements to the power of God. Well, when the sports writers interrogated him further, he explained, don't get the idea that some metaphysical power comes down as I start to pole vault and lifts me magically over the bar. He said, it isn't that way at all. When I speak of the power of God, I mean the psychological influence which God exerts over all men and women who search their souls and find their the strength to perform wonderful things in every walk of life, end of quote. I delight in that statement by Bob Richards, because the power of God is real in your life no matter what you do. Whether you're a merchant, an attorney, a physician, a housewife, a student, a ditch digger, a pole vaulter, whatever, the power of God can lift your spirit psychologically and enable you to be all you can become. But the power of God is real. You can know that power of God within your own life. 
the great scientist Albert Einstein wrote, the cosmic religious experience is the strongest and noblest driving force behind scientific research. That was his experience as a scientist. That doing scientific research, studying the universe, evolving that monumental equation, E equals MC squared, as Albert Einstein did, that that was for him a cosmic religious experience. And Dr. Charles Steinmetz, the scientific genius, said someday people will learn that material things do not bring real happiness and are of little use in making men and women creative and powerful. Then, wrote Steinmetz, will the scientists of the world turn their laboratories to the study of God and the study of prayer. When that day comes, the world will see more advancement in one generation than it has seen in the last four generations. Such is the power of God. Such is the promise of the future. When you place your future into the hands of the living God, who loves you with a love so tremendous that if you could only experience it for one split second, you would never again be the same. And by faith, you can experience it, not merely for a split second, but for all the rest of your days on this earth and for all eternity as well, because God loves you. That is the central message of this radio broadcast, that you can find and know God to the satisfaction of your soul. God has a plan for you. His Spirit indwells your mind to lead, guide, and instruct you in His will. If you will quest for perfection, seek for truth, beauty, and goodness, and give yourself wholeheartedly in love for God and love for others. The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God, this ringing message is literally not only the hope of the world, it is the hope of your human life in this instant, in this moment. May you claim it right here, right now, in vital and living faith. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written things on finding God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, life after death. All of this, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-A. S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.